All right. Yeah. Another chilling scares. I'm surprised that more people don't do like nukes, like all of them, to be fair. I'm surprised they don't all do more abandoned buildings because abandoned buildings is just creepy. Anything can be living in there, animal, a person. I think people are the worst. Animals would be, do you know what I mean, pretty shook of humans. But yeah, I'm surprised. Like, I suppose in nukes you get some abandoned building. Get on your bed. Bed. No, bed. Lie down. But yeah. Yeah, I suppose nukes, yeah, you do get some abandoned buildings. But he really is focused on ghosts, really. But yeah. Um, six most disturbing abandoned building encounters caught on camera. So yeah, let's go. Christopher Brian Hill is an urban explorer with a YouTube channel called Urbex Hill. Over the past 10 years, he's been uploading raw footage of his visits to some of the creepiest abandoned buildings in the country, often running into unexpected and sometimes life-threatening situations. Urban explorers like Chris face many dangers, from aggressive stray dogs to hostile squatters to respiratory risks and unsound structures, venturing into an unfamiliar yeah, abandoned building is nice. much more risky than it might sound. It's obviously much safer to explore abandoned buildings in the light of day and with a group of friends, but in most of his videos, Chris explores at night and always alone. In June 2022, he visited the abandoned Westinghouse Electric Factory located in Cleveland, Ohio. Built more than a century ago, the factory originally consisted of seven different buildings, but most of them have been demolished by now. Even though the Westinghouse Company was established in 1886, it didn't reach Cleveland until 1894. Founded by Thomas Edison, Westinghouse is best known for the notable engineers who worked for the company, including Nikola Tesla and William Stanley. For several decades, the Westinghouse company rivaled General Electric, and it was last used as a lighting equipment production plant before its abandonment in 1979. For the past four and a half decades, the abandoned factory has been one of the hottest urban exploration locations for curious explorers and YouTubers. In 2012, the factory started receiving even more attention after the Black Widow interrogation scene from the first movie of the Avengers was shot there. Ten years later, Chris made the trip to the abandoned factory and recorded everything he saw. As Chris begins exploring, there doesn't seem to be anyone around, and only the sound of crickets can be heard in the darkness as he walks around the outside of the building. Disturbingly, the sound of gunshots can be heard in the distance less than five minutes into the recording. It's worth mentioning that for the past few years, Cleveland has been ranked as one of the top 10 most dangerous cities in the US, making this visit to the abandoned factory even more risky. That ain't just a little bit of shooting either. Someone's having a war. Oh, that sounds like a shootout. Yeah. Chris has experience exploring everything from abandoned mental hospitals and sanatoriums to vacant occult temples, and he shrugs off the fear as he enters the creepy building. Just like in many abandoned buildings, Chris finds a mattress on the floor, meaning at least one person has been sleeping there recently. As he captures footage of the first floor and walks up the stairs to the second floor, all that can be heard in the eerie darkness is the sound of his footsteps. A few minutes later, Chris goes down to the basement, and the footage becomes increasingly creepier as Chris runs into a series of dead ends under the leaky, moldy ceiling. At several points during his exploration of the basement, he can be heard making comments about a strange noise coming from somewhere on that floor. And at first, thing is, as well, it, if you're sleeping in somewhere like that, you can't have all your marbles. Do you know what I mean? See, if there is someone in there, they're definitely a little kooky. He seems to think it's an animal. 
Alarmingly, he finds a few shell casings on the ground from what was probably a 9mm handgun. Although it would be pretty unsettling to find something like this lying on the ground in an abandoned factory basement, it's worth mentioning that police departments often use abandoned buildings and complexes for training exercises. However, in this case, it's impossible to know if that's really what happened. Shortly after, he comes across a series of disturbing messages on the walls. He continues recording as he walks down narrow corridors, and this is where things get a lot more disturbing. How is he not looking behind After him? about 20 minutes of exploring, the visit takes a very dark turn as Chris runs into a hunched over man without a light at the far end of the room. He calls out to him and asks if he needs any help, but the man doesn't move or respond, and Chris decides to leave him alone. Understandably, Chris's breathing can be heard getting louder and heavier after the extremely unsettling encounter, but things were only about to get more disturbing for him. That could be a spice head, Mo. I'll see a spice head in London. And literally, they take one puff of a spice joint, and then, like, they're just, like, they're gone. Do you know what I mean? They just pass out and then come round and do it again. It's mental. I'm going to help that dude out. I'm going to get this dude a $20 bill. Yo. Hey, I got some money for you. He's not there, and he's not responding. About four minutes later, Chris decides to go back to help the man out by giving him a $20 bill. But alarmingly, when he goes back to the room, the man is no longer there. This could be incredibly dangerous, as squatters are known to behave aggressively toward unwanted visitors. And because they know the place better than anyone else, they can easily hide in the shadows and attack or scare visitors when they least expect it. One theory that many viewers seemed to favor was that maybe the man was not a homeless person at all, but a gang member who was hiding from the shootout that could be heard at the beginning of the video. However, it's impossible to confirm if this was actually the case, and it seems pretty unlikely given his strange behavior. As he continues searching for the man, Chris notices bats flying around the basement, and things get even more eerie at this point. Right when he walks into one of the rooms, if you look closely at the far left of the screen, you can actually see the man from earlier standing in what used to be a door frame, staring at Chris in the darkness. Alarmingly, Chris doesn't notice and continues walking. It's impossible to know how long the man had been following him, and in these kind of situations, it can be hard to gauge the squatter's intentions. A few minutes later, the squatter can be seen walking outside as cars pass by the side of the building. At one point, Chris mentions he thinks the guy said hello but it can't be heard clearly through the camera audio. Just when he decides to head out, he hears a cell phone vibrate, indicating that there are more people down there with him hiding in the darkness. Having had enough disturbing encounters for the night, he decides to play it safe, and fortunately, he was able to leave the building unharmed. Okay, on your bed. He never found out who that man was, and since then, he hasn't uploaded another no, video of the bed. Westinghouse factory. This video was recorded in Tartu, Estonia, and uploaded to YouTube in August of 2016. Well, I just need to say, that first boy or first man is a lunatic. I'm out there the second I see someone crouching in the corner. Do you know what I mean? That he's creepily standing there. And like I say, yeah, I didn't think of a gang member, but that does seem an odd place for a gang member to go and an odd thing for them to do, to just kneel in the corner. Yeah, that boy's a lunatic. In it, a group of four teenagers visit an abandoned sauna that was built more than a century ago in 1915, back when Estonia was still part of the Russian Empire. 
After fulfilling its purpose for 80 years, the sauna was decommissioned in 1995. The building remained abandoned for 23 years until in 2018 it was fully renovated and turned into a beauty salon, which is still operating as of this video's upload in 2023. In August of 2016, the uploader visited the abandoned location with three friends. Upon entering the building, you can see that it looks exactly what you would expect a building that has been abandoned for 21 years to look like. There's an insane amount of mold growing freely on the walls, the heaters are covered in a thick layer of rust, the floor is full of holes, and the entire structure looks like it could collapse at any second. Throughout the video, the teenage explorers also run into some disturbing messages on the walls. An especially eerie one reads, you can't hide, and there are also several creepy drawings of stick figures graffitied on the walls in some of the other rooms. For the first few minutes of the visit, other than the disturbing messages and some loose shoes and other personal belongings, there doesn't seem to be any indication that somebody could be living there or had even visited the location recently. However, about 20 minutes into the visit, one of the teenagers finds a door frame covered by a curtain, and they decide to explore the room. <laughs> As one of the explorers shines a flashlight into the room, a gut-wrenching scream can be heard coming from the shadows. Immediately, the four teenagers run out of the building in a panic. When they finally step outside, the sun is already set, and the boys get into the car to flee from the location. Although the explorer was too busy running to show footage of the screaming man, it's more than likely that it was a homeless resident of the abandoned building who wasn't expecting visitors. Still, it must have been extremely disturbing to experience something like that, even if they went together as a group. After that day in 2016, the boys never went back to the abandoned sauna again. Yeah, that's creepy. In March of 2022, YouTubers Meg and Chris uploaded a new video to their channel, Back in Time MC, in which they showed footage of their visit to a rundown old farmhouse somewhere in the UK. In the caption, they mentioned that they found an entry point through an open window around the side of the house. Based on the state of disarray the farmhouse is in, it's clear that nobody has been maintaining it for quite some time. The floor is covered in leaves and cobwebs, the shoes look dusty and unused, and there are even a couple of dead animals lying on the floor, no, along no. with some shotgun shells lying on top of a bedside table. The only clues that indicate somebody could have been at the location relatively recently are that one of the light bulbs in one of the bedrooms looks relatively new, and some of the clothes in the closet look only gently used. Based on the pictures that Chris finds on different shelves and hung up on the walls, it appears as if a family of at least four children used to live in the farmhouse. As the couple continues with the exploration, they walk into one of the upstairs bedrooms, where they find something very unexpected. Looks like red dead. Now a piece of carpet that comes all the way across. Absolutely nuts. Maybe we'll come into this bedroom here. And wow. Come here. Oh my god. You know, you're, you're alive. You are. You know, mum. We... You can't live in here. Yeah. You no. Can't. It's really a car. Nothing we thought it was abandoned. We thought it was abandoned. You can't live in here. When he first walked into the room, Chris didn't notice that there was someone asleep in the bed. It wasn't until Meg walked in and made a noise that the woman sleeping in the bed woke up and gave them the scare of their life. Although the uploaders blurred the woman's face out of respect for her privacy, it's clear that she's pretty old. During the conversation, she tells the couple that she doesn't have any family that could take her to live somewhere else less depressing. Out of sheer kindness, Chris and Meg keep the lady company and try their best to understand her situation. She introduces herself as Jane, and over the next 10 minutes, they ask her questions about how she ended up living all alone in an abandoned farmhouse. Thanks to the couple's empathy, the initial shock of being startled by the sleeping old lady and seeing her living in such terrible conditions quickly turns into a heartwarming moment in which the three of them talk about each other's lives. What happened was, I came here to help somebody. Okay. And this is only for a week I'm coming. Yeah. And that was um, 1993. Oh, God. Wow, so you've been here nearly 30 years. years. Just, yeah. 
Disturbingly, Jane mentioned she's been living in the abandoned farmhouse for 30 years. And even though Chris and Meg offer to help her, bring her food, and buy her clean clothes and sheets, she seems hesitant to accept anything from them, claiming that she's fine living the way she does. She mentions that even though it's not her house, the men who work at the farmhouse know she's there and they bring her food and water every day. In a touching moment at the end, the couple agrees with Jane to visit her again soon. This would have been a happy ending to the story, but Chris and Meg included a caption at the end of the video that casts the situation in a more disturbing light. The caption reads, I did a lot of research to try and find the name of the farm and whom it was owned by. Luckily, I got the information needed, and I even got a message from someone who knew the farmer who farms there. Chris goes on to explain that the man who reached out to him also knew that Jane was living there, and that the farmer also lives in the farmhouse with her. According to the man, Jane is very well cared for, but she chooses to live in those terrible conditions anyway. The man also mentioned that Jane's husband is up there constantly to make sure she's okay, but she doesn't accept his help very easily, or anyone's help for that matter. It's worth mentioning that Jane might not have been completely truthful about her situation to Chris and Meg. During their conversation, she mentioned that she didn't have anyone to care for her except for the farmer, but the man who knew the farmer told Chris that she also has a brother who tries to take care of her. Not entirely convinced by what the man told him, Chris continued digging for information and found that the farm was not on any land registry records, but there was another property to Jane's name that she owned between 1986 and 2015. After visiting the other property, Chris mentioned that it was as unkempt and beat up as the farmhouse itself. Having heard two different versions of the story from the man who contacted him and from Jane herself, he decided to contact Adult Social Services. This is the email he received from them. Good morning, thank you for your email. I can confirm that Adult Social Care are aware of this lady, however, I am not able to provide you with any further details. We appreciate your input and the information you have provided, and thank you for raising your concerns with us. Chris then told the man who contacted him to tell Jane that he and Meg would be happy to go back and visit her if she wanted them to. After this, there were no further updates on the old woman, and we'll likely never know what became of her. The only thing we know for sure is that if someone else decides to explore the abandoned farmhouse in the future, they'll likely run into the same situation as Chris and Meg. Sadly, this type of situation is much more common than many people realize. With rising prices and the overall state of the global economy, a large part of the elderly population is being forgotten. Hopefully Jane can accept some help from her family members and live out the rest of her days in much better and healthier conditions than the one she was in when the video was uploaded. That poor old woman, she, uh... yeah, that's tragic, but then if she's happy, do you know what I mean? She's getting looked after, kind of. People know she's there, so they know to be aware. It's nice of the workers as well to, like, kind of, yeah, look after her, bring her food and water every day. Why can't I? When they said, you can't live in here, why can't I? Yeah, she's a pretty gangster granny, to be fair, because that is some scary situation to be in. However... You could have just stayed under there. Although, I imagine they pulled the cover back and she was like hiding. Yeah, that would have been creepy. But yeah, that was pretty brutal. But yeah, let's go. Robert Fulton Elementary is an abandoned school in a pretty rough neighborhood of Cleveland, Ohio. The building is 92 years old and has been abandoned for over 13 years. After several complaints from nearby residents who mentioned that the abandoned building was an eyesore, a potential crime hotspot, and that it was lowering the value of their properties, the mayor of Cleveland announced plans to turn the rundown old building into a high-quality, mixed-income housing unit for the community. Although the idea is still in the planning stages and the city needs more funding to complete the project, the plan is for the renovations to begin by the end of 2024. For now, Robert Fulton Elementary remains one of the creepiest abandoned schools in the country. In May of 2023, Chris Hill, again from the YouTube channel Urbex Hill, Hill, uploaded a video in which he made a second visit to the boarded up, abandoned elementary school. The first video he made of the school was back in 2022. During his first visit, he heard strange humming, chanting, creaking, and banging noises coming from different rooms. This was part of the description in the first video. Most sections of the building are falling apart, and the water and elements have done irreversible damage to the structure. I would not recommend anyone explore this school, you risk getting robbed or worse. 
With that being said, I heard weird noises and other various things during my exploration. After these incidents, the vast majority of people would have been too terrified to even think of going back. But two years later, Chris decided to make a second visit to the school alone at 1 a.m. Wow. It's guys a lunatic. The decay is crazy in here. From the very beginning of the footage, it's clear that Robert Fulton Elementary belongs in a different category of abandoned buildings than most others. What stands out the most about the building is the fact that just over a decade ago, children were learning in those classrooms, running and playing in the halls, and now it looks more like something out of a horror movie than a school. The eeriness of the location, the pitch darkness, and the extreme state of decay of the building all contribute to the school's incredibly creepy atmosphere, and not a lot of people would dare go in there at night, much less alone. For a building that has only been abandoned for 13 years, Robert Fulton Elementary is in a much worse state than other buildings that have been vacant for much longer. But Chris doesn't seem to mind as he captures footage of the dark corridors with peeling walls and random debris lying all over the floor. As he ventures deeper into the school, Chris starts hearing strange noises, but nobody seems to be around, and he continues his exploration in the chilling silence. The underlying structure in some of the rooms on the upper floors seems extremely unstable, but Chris shows his expertise in urban exploration by avoiding the surfaces that crack under his feet. After about 15 minutes of exploring the top floors, Chris goes down into the basement, which is arguably the most deteriorated part of the school. As he explores the dark rooms, he finds some indications that other people could be living there. Interestingly, he also finds what appears to be a boiler room that's been flooded with water. At around the 30 minute mark, a loud banging noise can be heard coming from one of the rooms, and it becomes very clear that Chris is not alone. As he steps into one of the classrooms, he finds a very eerie message written on the chalkboard which reads, Don't explore alone, as well as a paper sign on the door that reads, Keep out. Despite the clear warnings, he goes inside, only to find more signs that somebody's living there. This is where Chris's visit to Robert Fulton Elementary takes a very chilling turn. Fearing for his life after hearing the blood-curdling scream, he sprints out of the building to safety, hoping that the man wasn't following him. If you look closely at the footage, you can see the outline of the screaming man when Chris peels back the curtain to his room. Upon reviewing the footage later that night, he found something else even more unsettling. When he first walked into the building, his camera caught something that he didn't notice at the time. In the distance, a man's shadow can be seen walking into one of the rooms. It's not clear where the man went after that, but based on the strange noises Chris heard throughout his visit, it's very likely that the man was watching him all along. Although the scream was terrifying to hear, and we can only imagine what Chris must have felt at that moment, it's worth mentioning that the room he entered was probably the man's home, and from the squatter's perspective, it was probably just as terrifying to see a random man pull back the curtain to his room. These kinds of encounters can often get violent very quickly, but thankfully Chris once again made it out safely. He hasn't uploaded new footage of the location since then. This footage was uploaded. He's mental. He's me he needs to start going with people. But that was terrifying. That made me go cold. Like, yeah, I hate jump scares. I hate jump scare movies, but yeah, they do scare you a hundred percent. That literally made my blood go cold. He's got so much balls. So much balls. Hold on, two secs, actually. All right, yeah, let's finish it off. Let's go. In October 2019 by YouTuber Baker X Derek, a tour guide from San Bernardino, California. One day, as he was riding his motorcycle on the highway in California, he noticed an abandoned house sitting on top of a hill and decided to take a look inside. From the very beginning of the footage, it becomes clear that somebody has already been there and that it probably wasn't the original owners of the house. 
Unlike many abandoned buildings, you can tell this house used to be beautiful before it was vacated, but that doesn't make it any less creepy to visit, even in the middle of the day. Oh. Heebie jeebies, dude. Dude, that dark room. I kept feeling something was gonna jump out at me. What's down here? What is wrong somebody. with these people? I think I hear something. Lunatics. Derek goes down to explore one of the rooms on the bottom floor, and this is where he hears a disturbing thud. Terrified, he makes a run for it and even trips and falls on his way out, but eventually he gets back on his motorcycle and flees the location. As per one of the most popular theories proposed by viewers, the noise was probably made by a homeless person who was trying to warn Derek to get out of his home. Although squatters don't spend all their time lurking in the shadows, it's common for them to use the darkness as a tool when someone comes into the building unannounced. It's a basic rule of urban exploration that if you hear a loud noise upon entering a room, you should probably leave. Sometimes squatters make a noise as a first and final warning to drive visitors away. What do you mean that's a rule? That's not a rule, that's a... instinctual... save yourself, do you know what I mean? If you go in a dark room and something bangs like that, yeah, get out. Like, I don't think, like, you need to be taught that rule to do that. Like, you're just going to do it. Respectfully, if Derek had pushed forward, he may have been attacked by whoever was hiding in the darkness. It's a natural impulse to call out and announce your presence in these kinds of situations, but squatters will very rarely answer these calls in a normal way. Nobody likes to be seen living in those conditions, and more often than not, the response will be rather aggressive and sometimes even violent. Fortunately, in this case, Derek was able to get away from the potentially dangerous situation just in time. In central Ontario, Canada, there's a small community south of Port Elgin known as North Bruce. To the locals, however, it's known as the Devil's Elbow. According to John, the urban explorer who uploaded this video, the reason for the name was that there was once an occult high priest who lived in the mansion at a cul-de-sac, in which the townspeople used to think there was paranormal activity due to the occult rituals the priest used to perform in his home. The mansion has since been abandoned, and as of today, nobody wants to buy- Sorry to go on a sidetrack, but that just reminded me of something. What do you lot think about cursed families being cursed from- their ancestors doing sacrificial things to gods years ago because the, I've I heard it from this you uh, well former UK criminal who said that when he was younger he when he first got arrested at like uh, he was little so like I don't know like twelve or something when he went there he was. His mum and dad had separated. Half the family went with the mum and half of them went with the dad. He went with the dad, so he didn't know his other brothers. I think he had two sisters with him and his two sisters went with his dad. And, like, four brothers went with the mum. And they didn't know each other, separate lives. And he said when he went to that school, to some, like, reform school, old school English reform schools that was brutal he said that he all of his brothers was there they didn't grow up together but yet they were all kind of this exactly the same and it's the interview it's on James English he says that yeah if you go back especially in this country like it was pagan it was like the Celtic pagan so they would have sacrificed so yeah, I've never thought of it like that, but saying that families today go through bad things like that family, do you know what I mean? All their lives, them brothers and him was being shot, stabbed, do you know what I mean? Had horrendous lives, but also had money and women, and do you know what I mean? But, yeah, the, James English says that he don't believe in religions and that, but he's heard people talk about, like, ancient sacrifices that your family made 
are impacting you today. And sorry, I started to go on that tangent, but it just reminded me because them saying that them doing like rituals in an abandoned place and now people think it's haunted because of, yeah, it just reminded me. But yeah, let me know what you think of that. It's kind of a good, fun theory to think. But yeah, anyway, let's go. They're living it due to its chilling atmosphere and sketchy past. According to John, some renovations have been made sporadically since the house was vacated, but as of the video's upload, the house was still abandoned. In 2019, John set out to explore the occult mansion alone at night, but things didn't go exactly as he planned. In comparison to other abandoned buildings, the mansion seems to be in relatively good shape except for the garage, which has clearly seen better days. About five minutes into the exploration, John starts to hear strange noises upstairs, but they seem to quiet down as soon as he climbs the set of stairs. Been hearing stuff upstairs but I'm hoping and I mean this I really hope that it's paranormal and not someone freaking in here my keys are making noises freaking somebody down there dude Come on, quit messing with me. I'm just trying to freaking, I, I'll leave. There's some mess in here. Now that I've got myself in a bad situation. Oh jeez. Disturbingly, as he walks around upstairs, the noises can be heard again, even louder this time, leading John to think that perhaps someone else is in there messing with him. Although he mentions loudly to whoever is in there with him that his only intention is to explore and that he doesn't want to bother anyone, whoever was making the noise doesn't respond and continues hiding. The noises stop for a couple minutes, but then something terrifying happens. Oh God. Oh my God, Freelander. Hello? Is there somebody here? I'm not here to bother or rob anything. I was just here exploring. I thought it was a bad- <laughs> Why would you lock yourself in? Disturbingly, a man's voice can be heard screaming, I'm gonna kill you, and before catching a glimpse of who it is, John runs out of the mansion immediately and doesn't look back until he's a safe distance away from the building. It's unknown who was in the house or how long they had been watching him, or even if they had bad intentions or were just messing with him. According to several viewers, it's very unlikely that the other person in the house was another explorer. In the urban exploration community, people usually help each other out, and there's a sort of code that every explorer sticks to in order to help keep creepy locations as safe to visit as possible. If the other person in the house was another explorer, making noises in an abandoned house and screaming, I'm going to kill you, would obviously be very out of the ordinary. That leaves the question of who could have screamed at John. It's more than likely that it was just a homeless person who didn't want any visitors, but because John ran out before he could see anyone, this much will probably remain unknown forever. Yeah, that was f creepy, but it is. That's what I mean. Them abandoned building ones is scary just because people live in them. Like, people are scarier. And I do think whoever was in there, they were messing with him, but, like, I think in order to make him leave, like, making that noise, do you know what I mean? He knew someone was in there, but he kept going. Then they turned the light on upstairs. Still didn't go. He started walking upstairs, talking, saying, I'm not going to... So, yeah. Yeah. However, that is terrifying. But, like I say, I don't think that person actually did have bad intentions because they could have done something like, uh, like loads in that situation. They, I think they were trying to get him to go. And it is true what he said in the video before that these people, like, people don't want to be seen in them situations. Still. It's mental to do things like that. Because that house as well wasn't really like the others. Like they had, That house looked like in good nick still. Like you could live there. But yeah, 
anyway, that's the reaction. So we 